Um, this is in sport mode from the standing start. <laughs> Jesus. Hi everybody, I'm Lawrence Todd at Design 911 and today I'm going to be giving you a tech talk on brake calipers. <laughs> specifically the big red conversion. Now, if you're interested in the big red conversion for your 911, make sure you stay and watch the full video for a treat. So the big red conversion or the big reds is the nickname given to the brake calipers which was used on the 964 Turbo, 993 Turbo and the 993 RS. This brake caliper was used to be different and exclusive for these high performance models but actually it was primarily used for its superior braking performance. It is these two factors, its exclusivity on high performance Porsches and its improved braking performance that make it a common upgrade for Porsche owners. Why does this brake caliper have superior braking performance to the brake calipers which are on these other earlier 911s that people are upgrading from? Well, primarily because of its size difference. As you can see, this brake caliper is significantly bigger than this caliper. Its radius is much bigger. This increase in radius allows the brakes to use a significantly bigger brake disc. This is the brake disc that's used on the big red conversion, and this is the brake disc used on an earlier 911. If we put them together, you can see there is a monster difference. This original brake disc is 282 millimeters, compared to a 322 millimeter brake disc. What does this mean? Well, by using a much bigger brake disc, your braking system has much more mechanical advantage. Your braking system can generate much more torque. That's the first performance upgrade. The second performance upgrade, again, comes with this increase in size. These bigger brake calipers were able to use much bigger brake pads. This is the brake pad that's used in the big red system, and this is the brake pad used in the earlier 911 system. As you can see, if I can put these together, this newer, bigger brake pad is almost twice the size of the one used before. Now, this doesn't necessarily give you more braking force, but what it does give is it allows for much better heat dissipation. Your brakes don't get as hot, and as a result, you don't experience brake fade, such that you have much more efficient braking. If we actually put both of these pads together, you can almost see that the braking surface area is almost 100% more. It's not quite, but it is almost 100% more. That's the second reason why you get much better performance. Bigger brake pads allow for better heat dissipation or heat control in your braking system. Now, the final and third reason why these brake calipers and this big red conversion allows for much greater performance is because the big red brake caliper, it's a four pot system. Now, what does a four pot system mean? A four pot system means that the brake caliper has four pistons. Pot is piston. So this caliper has four pistons, whereas the original caliper used on the early 911s is only a two pot system. Using four pots instead of two pots means that the brakes can generate much greater braking force for the same hydraulic pressure in your braking system. These, these pots are almost exactly the same diameter, maybe a little bit smaller, but more or less the same diameter as these pots in this caliper, which means that this caliper can generate for the same hydraulic pressure twice the amount of braking force. So if you are interested in the big red conversion, what are you gonna get in the box? Well, this is a great reflection of what is in the box, but it's good to bear in mind that this conversion comes for a range of the early 911s. This kit here is specifically for the 3.2 Carrera. So what is in the box? You're gonna get two brake discs. These brake discs are off a 993 Turbo with these more protruded hats. Don't worry, in the box, you're also gonna get these hub converters, okay? These hub converters replace these hats. We're gonna come back to these, but remember them. So along with the discs and those hub converters to make the discs fit your hubs, you're gonna get two brake calipers, 
not multicolored, either red or yellow. They come in those two colors. Alternatively, you can buy either raw and then respray them yourself or get them repowder coated. In addition to the disc calipers and the hub converters, you're then gonna get caliper hangers to fit the calipers to your stub axles and you're gonna get all the necessary fastings and fixings. Now, depending on which kit you're purchasing for your car, this is where there may be a slight variation. You're gonna get the brake pads that the calipers need. You're gonna get four brake pads or two sets, depending on which way you wanna look at it. But if you're ordering the kit for a 3.2 Carrera, like this kit here, the brake pads are also gonna come with wear sensors. So you'll get two sets of wear sensors for each caliper. If you're ordering the kit for a different car, the pads are gonna be the same, but you won't have this wear sensor. This is purely for the 3.2 Carrera. So if you are ordering this for a different car and you don't have this wear sensor in it, you're not missing anything. It's just not in the kit. Finally, to top this kit off, you also get two Porsche transfers that you can stick onto the calipers once they're fitted to finish the look. Okay. So once you've ordered your kit and you've got it out of the box, as intimidating as this may look, it's actually a fairly simple plug and play system, which I'm gonna step you through. But there are some things, or there's one thing that you do need to do before you can just start building up your car. Now, as I said, these discs are off a 993 Turbo with these much taller hats. These hats are not compatible with your car. That's why you've been equipped with these two hub adapters. So, before you go put it on the car, the first thing that you need to do is swap out these hats for these hub converters. The way you do that, this disc here has its hat fully assembled. On the inside of the disc, you're gonna find a series of fixings. To undo these, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter socket. You don't have to hold the other side because the nut is a type of captive nut. So get a socket, a 10 mil, and just go around with your ratchet undoing all of these fastings and fixings. This is, this is a disc that we've half started dissembling. Um, so it's only got two left and they're finger tight. So I haven't got a ratchet, I've just got the socket. So you're gonna wanna undo these fixings. Once you've taken them all out, turn the disc. You're gonna to have to hold onto it carefully so it doesn't drop. So last thing you wanna do is smash your new brake disc. Turn it back over and remove the hat, but keep hold of all of these fixings, because you're gonna need them. So safely store these little barrel type nuts and the bolts, screws, if you're gonna be pedantic. This is the hat that you don't need, so put that to a side. Next, you need to pick up your hub adapter. Now, this is where you need to be careful because you can put it on the disc a series of different ways. There's four different kind of potential ways you could fix this to your disc, but there is only one right way. So once the disc has been laid down flat, you've removed the hub, you wanna then pick the disc up and flip it back on its safe face so that you have this recess presented to you. That is the side that you want this hub adapter fitted to. Next, you wanna take the hub adapter such that if you look at it, there's one side which has a step and there's another side which has like this chamfered lip in the middle. You wanna pl place the hub adapter down so it's step side down such that the, this um, chamfered edge is presented to you. Put it in the disc like this and it will locate. Give it a bit of rotation so that it has located and then line up the fixing holes. Now, what you can do is drop the barrel nuts in from the same side, and you'll see that one side of the barrel nut has a flat. That flat goes up against the edge of the ridge in the center of the hub adapter. So go through sliding in all those barrel nuts. Right, that's all of our barrel nuts in. I've put those in all dry with no grease, but probably wouldn't harm just putting a little bit of assembly grease around the outside of those barrel nuts to help them stay in place. Because the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick the disc up. Don't flip it over because everything will fall out. Hold it on its end and then put in all of your, your screws.
Okay, so that is all of these fixings done up. I've done these up finger tight, but you're gonna to wanna to talk these up. All of the talk settings for everything we talk about in this video are linked in the description of the video. So, once you've taken the old top hats off and you've replaced them for these hub adapters, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pull off the hub from your car, the wheel carrier, um, also known as the hub on your car. This thing. Okay, so it's gonna have some bearings in. So you take off, you take off the little cap. Um, there's then like a clamping nut, which you access the Allen key. I think it's an M6 Allen key through this little groove. You undo that, the, the bolt in the clamping nut, and then you can un unscrew it, um, relieving or revealing the end of your stub axle. You'll then be able to pull your hub off. You would have already had to have removed your old brake caliper to do this because that will be over the disc and the disc is attached to this. So remove the brake caliper and then you'll be able to pull this off. Once you've pulled this off, there's a series of holes. Uh, there will be bolts in these uh, in here. You wanna undo those and that will allow you to remove the old brake disc, which will be mounted something like that. So you're gonna pull this whole assembly off undo those bolts and your brake disc will come off the old hub. Put your old brake disc to the side, take it to the scrap man, and then once you've got your hub, clean it up and then you want to mount your new disc to the hub. You want to take your brake disc and sit it down such that the heads of the bolts or screws, that's going to split the audience, are facing towards you. Once the disc is raised, you'll then be able to take your hub with its old brake disc removed and place it in the center of the hub adapter. If you then rotate it such that all of the holes align, you'll then be able to bolt in, put your bolts back in the holes and do them up. Okay, so once you've installed the disc onto the hub using all five bolts, you can then put this sub-assembly to the side. Do the other one. Um, but put it to the side. So before you install your new hub onto the stub axle, it's important to have installed your caliper hanger adapter. So these new big red calipers will not mount directly onto where your old caliper picked up. Instead, you have to mount this adapter to where your old caliper picked up, and then the new caliper will mount to this. So you take your adapter and it, it mounts behind the stub axle. In a very similar way that your caliper came off from behind, you wanna mount the adapter plate from behind. The kit comes with the adapters and two fixings for each one, so they just screw in. Right, so that is your caliper hanger adapter mounted to the stub axle. Now you'll be ready to put on the sub-assembly that you created with your brake, disc and hub. This goes on. It will be a much tighter fit. This assembly doesn't have any bearings in it. You'll bear, you will have bearings that are working on the stub axle. Once that's on, you can then put back on the clamping nut, do it up until all the play in the hub is removed and then do up the, um, the locking clamp. You can then, once the locking clamp is done up, you can then put the cap back on. The final thing to do will then be install your brake caliper. So this mounts onto the caliper hanger adapter, slides over the brake disc, take your fixings for the caliper. They go through these nice shiny holes and straight into the holes on your uh, caliper hanger adapter. Okay, so take your anti-vibration shims and you place them in the pistons. For convenience and simplicity for this video, I'm gonna use this caliper here to show you. So I've got the big shims here. Here are the big uh, pistons with the, the much bigger cutout and it just pushes in. And likewise, this one up here, if I rotate this round, you may be able to see it go in. Hold it up. 
that goes in like that. And then you want to take shims with the smaller. That goes in and that goes in. Something I haven't done in this video because we don't want to use these shims is take off the backing, the 3M kind of backing to reveal the adhesive. Before you put those in, you're going to want to have removed that. So your anti-vibration shims are in. And now all you need to do is install your brake pads. And these just slide in like so, either side of the disc, like this. And if I was to do it on this assembly, it'd go in like this, and like this. We've already assembled our big red brake conversion kit on this electric 911. This electric 911 has a huge amount of horsepower. That is why the conversion was done. It needed a lot better brakes than it had when it came out the factory. Let's go see how they work. Right. So Graham, this is the, I know this car is the green electric car. Yeah, originally a Porsche 911 SC, 1981. Uh, it's in a metallic brown, um, just a standard one of the mill car. And now it's, now it's uh, so that was a three litre. Three litre SC. So now it's no longer a three litre and no. it is no longer brown, no. metallic brown. No. It is green. Bright green. So this car got the big red caliper upgrade. Yeah, purely for, because um, once you start <laughs> propelling it, we need something to stop, stop it. it. <laughs> as, as, as well as, uh, say, with the, with the big tyres on you and getting the power down as well. So we had to think about not so much getting there, but stop slowing it. it down as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll demonstrate the brakes on it now. Um, this is in sport mode from the standing start. <laughs> Jesus. I'll tell you what, the tyres handle it well. Yeah. But they're huge. So what were the tyres on the back? I was looking at them earlier and they're like... The, the, uh, 285. 55. On the Something I didn't talk about while by the desk, uh, talking about the big red calipers, big red uh, caliper conversion, is the minimum wheel size or rim size, I should say. Yeah. So you need to have a 17 inch 17 rim. 17 inch wheel to, to, to fit that yeah. massive caliper. Yeah. Um, anything smaller, and you're not going to be getting the wheel on, right? No. At the start of this video, I said that if you were interested in this big red conversion for your Porsche, that I would give you a treat. Well, here's the treat. If you go to the description of this video, in there you'll find a discount code for this very conversion. If you would like to order this big red conversion kit for your Porsche, head to Design 911. At the top of the website, you'll be able to enter your model and the type of Porsche you have. Then go to the left-hand navigation menu, go to Brakes, this will reveal another page where you'll have a grid layout. On this page, you'll see the big red conversion kit, which is suitable for the car that you specified at the start. If you have any questions about the package or you're struggling to find the kit for your car, don't hesitate to get in touch with Design 911 through their website. You'll be able to find their email or a phone number and get in touch with the team. Thank you.